Good evening, good evening, good evening. I normally don't come on Sunday nights. I normally come on Thursdays. But as some of you may see, all the postings that I've been posting lately has been a lot. And God has kind of been heavy on me lately. But I'm going to get out what needs to be getting out tonight for those that's in that hard place. And sometimes God will take us to a hard place in order for that hard place that we're in can be shattered, can be broken, can be made soft. Good evening, you guys. Hey, Mary Bell. My boy, my boy. Tone. Tasia. Well, tonight, I'm not going to be long. It's probably going to be no more than 15 minutes. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Mercedes. Um, I just want to talk about that hard place. And the reason why we sometimes go in that hard place. And we go in, but we also come out. So I will call it going through the hard place. And going through the hard place, we always got to go through to get to. Right? So Wayne, Adrian. So... I'm going to get started because I don't want to be long, but what I want to talk about is staying your course, just as Job did. Job stayed his course. How do we know Job stayed his course? From reading the book of Job. So, staying your course is what? Stand in the direction that God has called you to walk in. Where he has called you to soar in. We know that Job went through a lot of different things possibly in his mind because of all the things that God was allowing to happen. Knowing that he was a man pretty much without sin. He lost all of his cattle children might as well say he lost the very one that was attached to him his wife because she told him to curse God and die so I thank God now for us I thank God for even the hard places that he would have us in because guess what it does it gets us closer to him Mick long time Mick it gets us closer to him so while we're going through that hard place, if we can identify, if we can do as the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 2, if we can sort that thing out, if we can judge that thing, if we can figure out what's going on with that thing, guess what? We may find a solution. But we need to first try to identify where it's just coming from. Why is it hitting me? Job, I guess, didn't ask those questions because we already knew that while they was praising God, the scripture says that Satan was going to and fro, finding whom he may devour. And God selected Job. He chose him. So think about it. Why are you in your praise and worship? Why are you worshiping God? Why are you doing everything you're supposed to be doing? Why does evil still come? a part of life you may have not done anything wrong but my word for you is this still stay the course stay the course stay the course the course what are you saying Derek it's two different words in the course we have a course that's spelled C-O-R C-O-U-R-S-E and C-O-A-R-S-E. What's the difference? One of them talks about us, our embodiment. 
stand the course with the C O A R S E is that rough that I talked about last week, that rough, that loose, that texture in us, that skin that can be burned. And guess what? When you burn that skin, it's going to go back to what? The dust that we were made from. The other course is staying the course as Job did. No matter what comes your way, we must stay the course. Without staying the course, guess what? You're going to fall. Yes, you're going to get up. But you're going to fall. And we're not here to continue to fall and not learn from it. And all getting get what? Understanding. If you're not understanding what are you going through, guess what? You're going to do it again. If you don't train your child and teach them that was wrong, don't do that anymore. Discipline them. Guess what? They're going to do it again. So as parents, we're here to train our child, our children. We're here to teach them the right way. And if we don't, they're going to do it again. So what course will they be on? They're going to be in a totally different course than what you expect them to be on. So we must identify the problem. We must know what to do, what to say. How to respond to that problem once it's identified. Give you an example. You have a kid. They had a fight in school. Right? No matter what happened, he won, he lost, it doesn't matter. But he had a fight in school. What are you going to do? Don't fight anymore. No, you're going to first find out what happened. Why did you guys fight? Right? Once you find that out, then you're going to tell them that's wrong to fight in school. You're going to get in trouble. Once you tell them that, then what? Now you're going to lay out a plan, a course, for him to follow. The same thing your Heavenly Father has done for you. You have a course. You have a plan to follow. And if you don't follow that plan, guess what? You may get smacked on the wrist. And it may even worse. You may lose a job. You may lose a loved one. Something is going to happen that you may have to pay for. But again, going back to Job, he didn't do anything wrong. He was just caught up in a place where his faith had to be proven. Why? Proven to show that no matter what comes his way, he's going to stay the course. He stayed the course. No matter what happened, will you stay the course? Will you stay the course? That's the question you need to ask yourself. If you lose your job tomorrow, if your husband, your wife, your boyfriend or girlfriend cheated on you tomorrow. If your bank account got wiped out tomorrow. If you find out you have AIDS tomorrow. Will you stay the course? Will you break down? Will you go into depression? What will you do? Will you stay the course? Sometimes things have to happen in our lives so we can ask ourselves these hard questions. Why do you say the questions are hard? Because they don't seem hard when you're asking yourself until you're in that position. When you're in that position, all the advice that you gave other people, where's the advice now? You don't have it. The only way you can hold on to that advice is staying the course. How do you stay the course? Reading, seeking, asking, knocking. You have to stay the course. Are you willing to stay the course? Course 
Stand in your direction. Stand in that lane. That lane that you know is going to get you out of. That bad place. That quicksand. That mud. Those weeds that you tied up in. That wayward way of thinking. Stay the course. Some of you guys have so much in you that you're fighting yourself. Some of you guys don't want to listen to no one else because your way have worked for so long. But guess what? It's a new way. It's a new way. What did Eddie Murphy say in the movie? It's a new sheriff in town. And that new sheriff is your God. He has called you before the foundation of this world to stay the course, to stay in line, to stay not only the course, not only in line, but being obedient to what he called you to be. Is it that hard? It shouldn't be. I want to read something to you from 2 Timothy 1. Paul, an apostle, a special messenger of Christ Jesus by the will of God, by the will of God, you, a special messenger, I can't say that all you guys are apostles, but special messengers. Yeah, you are. When you're speaking anything uprightly, guess what? You're preaching to that person. So I will call you an ambassador of a good deed, if you will. For those who don't understand who you are, who you are, where you're going, Consider yourself as someone that's still seeking to be found. Now, hold on. To be found by whom? Not just God, but to be found by you. Sometimes we got to find ourselves. We got to find ourselves. We got to dig deep. Like Timothy. Like Paul noticed something in Timothy. He said he was a diamond. But he was covered up with what? Dirt. If he was a diamond covered up with dirt, but Paul knew it was something inside of him because of his grandmother and his mother. Just like in you, it's something inside of you. And most of us, we get to a place, we get to a position we get to an age in our life, and guess what happens? We sometimes lose ourselves. But you know when the Bible says, train up in a child and where they should go, when they get old, they won't depart. Why? Because they're going to remember those things that they was taught at that younger age. They're going to revert back. They may not understand. So guess what you do? You seek you knock, you ask, and you will be found. Found how? With the questions that you're seeking. Bob. What's up, Bob? Thank you, brother. So, it's amazing how we sometimes will look at someone else and we'll judge a person. You can never judge a book by its cover. Again, like I said last week, you got to know what's up in here. You got to know what's in here. Now, I didn't get on here tonight to go in depth with the Bible, but I just wanted to get on here tonight to bring some enlightenment, some understanding of some of you guys that's off course to get back on course and stay the course. Because these courses like bodies that we have. 
these well put together, well constructed bodies that we have. They're coarsely made. The dictionary talks about them as being grained. Like dust. Same thing Job talked about. Naked I came in and naked would I leave. Everything in here, everything around us, everything you have is vain. So what is it that you're looking for? Why are you in that dark place? And for those that's not in that dark place, if you ever go in that dark place, how would you get out? How would you even know how to get on course? Well, I'm glad you asked. How you get out, how you get on course, is go to the person that you know that has an inside connection with the source. You may say you have it, and that's fine. But you also know that it's someone that you know has an inside connection. The book of James, I believe it was 5, chapter 5, talks about the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. Had a buddy call me today, Daryl. Haven't talked to Daryl since 2005. He was going through some things. He lives in Alabama. And Daryl said, Derek, you know, I've thought about you, and it's, I'm stuck in this hard place. But I know who I can call to get a prayer through. I know who stays the course. I'm human. I also would like to pray for you guys. I also pray for myself. But some people are always calling upon you to pray for them and never pray for themselves. That's prostituting my gift. And that's not a good feeling to be prostituted. When you're staying the course and they're not. Again. Back to Timothy. He says. Paul. An apostle, a special messenger of Christ Jesus. By the will of God. According to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy now, my beloved child, to you is offered favor, spiritual blessings, mercy, and peace from God. So why is he saying this? Anybody have an idea? Because he had a praying grandmother. He had someone before him that stayed the course. And eventually, his grandmother and his mother, if the course was lined up correctly, they would go before Timothy. His grandmother would go before him. His mom would go before him. So what Paul is saying, I am calling up memories of your sincere, unqualified faith. He knew he wasn't qualified. The leaning of your entire personality on God in Christ. In absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. He knew already the prayers that his grandmother prayed for him. In confidence, he knew that God was going to raise his boy up. He didn't have a course to follow at first. You may not have had a course to follow. But in confidence, in faith, there's always somebody in the background. You may know him or you may not know him that's praying for you on your behalf. Whether you want to accept it or not. He says his power, his wisdom, his, and his goodness and his faith that first lived permanently in the heart of your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am fully persuaded that dwells in you also. It's dwelling in you also. Can we rock out our God-given assignment? 
Those that know the course, can you run that race? Could you stay on that course? Those that don't know, seek me out. Reach out to me. If not me, reach out to someone you know that's on that course. Because as these bodies we have, the C-O-A-R-S-E, these coarse bodies, these textured bodies, these bodies that's, that can dry out, have to walk it out, have to stay the course. But as we walking it out, guess what? Sometimes we need a hand. We need a lift. Our arms may get tired. We need someone to lift us up. Moses' arm was tired when he was fighting for the people. Aaron, what did he do? God said, go help him out. He raised his arm up. He held it up. We need somebody to help us in our hard places. So we can stay the course. That hard place. Sometimes gets so hard. You can't even walk through it. You can't get through it. Guess what happened to a cave? A mountain. When they want to make a highway. Guess what they do? They put a hole in it. A hole goes in it. So what? So a course can be made. When you're going through what you're going through, and if it's a hard place in your heart, it got to be broken so that course can continue to flow. You don't want to become stagnant in your flow of life. You don't want to become stagnant in your mind. A stagnant as if a tub of water is ran and you finish running the water and it's just sitting there. It's stagnant. There's no current. There's no flow. It's not moving. Once you begin to get in that water and submerge your feet in, what's going to happen? It's going to be a flow. It's going to begin to move. It's going to be a current. The same way with your life. And those that don't understand, remember, sometimes his word is a mystery. But it seems so plain to some others. You know why? Because they're seeking the truth. Like I put up earlier about a Chinese proverb. About the fish. Can a fish really understand what it is to be out the water? Probably not, because if he's out for so long, he's going to die. But that's all he knows. He knows that environment. He don't know the environment of nothing else but the water. Your environment that you're in, if you continue on the wrong course, it's going to direct you in the wrong direction. But if you get some information by asking, by seeking, then you may have that information. You may have just lost your way. You may have lost that direction. You may have went off course. But I pray now that everyone that's went off the course, everyone that's going back and forth, to and fro, that you will find your way back and you will find your way back stronger than you were before. It only takes for someone to speak a word to you. Everyone had a mother, everyone had a father. Whether they're here or not, you had one. If they didn't teach you accordingly, someone in your family or someone outside of the family taught you something. You have to find out whatever they taught you, was it the truth or not? And if it's harshness, is it's bitterness within that, what they taught you, most likely it's not the truth. Because the truth is peace. And I'll get and get what? Understanding. So I ask that everyone would search your heart out. Every place in your heart, every lane in your heart, if it's a place in there where that course, where it used to flow, has been hindered, has hardened with that mountain, not just a rock, but that mountain, you got to dig through there. You got to make that course visible again. Just like that cave. Just like that highway. But it's up to you to stay the course. Remember, two words 
two different meanings. Same way of speaking. Course. C O U A R S E. Us. Course. C O U R S E. Your course in life. Now, probably been on about 15 minutes. I'll probably um, shut this down if anyone will have any questions. Um, Dennis, my brother. What's going on, Dennis? Where are you, man? You in the States? What's up, Carrie? No questions? All right, we don't have any questions. Um, I just pray now that everyone will be able, to be able to identify what course they need to be on. What course that you have been fighting that you will gain more knowledge on. And why have you been fighting it? Because we can often find out the reason why we've been fighting it. You can get some resolve. If you're not a person to research anything, you won't have no resolve. Remember, I was sick with rhabdomyositis. I had three days to live. The doctor said if I lived, I was going to be on dialysis the rest of my life. And for sure, a kidney machine. Or dialysis for my kidneys, rather. But I had to realize one thing. I didn't believe. But I had to come to a resolve with myself. I heard about people getting saved from this, getting delivered from that, being healed from this. Really? What? So guess what? As I often say, your testimony, you become the preacher at that moment. When you're testifying, because the Bible says you would overcome by your testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. So why not give it a shot? Give it a try. As I said last week, in the 80s, you used to see on the back of the bumper stickers on cars, try God. If you don't, you don't know what you're missing. If you do, you will experience all that you need to. But I was healed from the wrap of my sides in 30 days. And I got it in my book. And I know I've been playing around. I haven't got that book out yet, but I will get that book out. Because now God has me on a different different page. If you go back and look at my, um, my videos, if you have understanding of the flow of a person, meaning the progression, you can see where a person was and where a person is going. Just as we read the word of God, what was written by a collective of men years ago, that's our instruction guide. Also, we hear what God is saying. So I just ask for you to get in the tune with yourself, understanding who you are. And once you find out who you are and where you need to go, stay the course. If this was a good message and you think somebody in your group needs to hear it, please share it. If not, that's fine as well. But until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for joining.